Ask Reddit by Visible Confusion 12. What is something that young people love that you don't understand? Filming themselves crying. Yeah I saw one the other day of a girl holding her pet snake that died and she's crying like she just discovered it. Like, she found her dead snake, set up a tripod with her camera phone and then got the angle right, recorded herself crying with the dead snake, then edited it with captions about her dead snake and put sad music over it. It's kind of gross when you think about it. She's looking for sympathy and in reality if you're doing all that shit. The snake obviously is less important than your likes on social media. Film random strangers without consent to make fun of them online or for internet clout. When my mom, in her 60s, was a substitute, she had two boys fighting in class. She went to them and yelled at them to stop. Since she was just a substitute teacher, she couldn't put her hands on them to pull them apart, so she looked at the students to ask for some help. Almost all the students were filming with smirks on their face. The boys immediately stopped and started laughing. She was so mortified, she said she cried the rest of the class while they continued to film her. No one from administration came when she called the main office. She obviously retired early after that. It made my blood boil. Deleted. Repetitive and loud. The point is to be annoying and have be people be annoyed. I really hate the TikTok voice. I was walking on the street and found this dead bird. The unending need to share everything on social media including their meals, their children, their partners everything. You forgot their crimes. I still can't believe people film and post themselves committing crimes. The amount of online content so many people create. It's fucking work. How do they have time for this? It's just hobbies. I mean kids aren't building model cars or wooden birdhouse in their spare time. Digital art is a way of expression. Whether it's making YouTube videos, making digital art, or just getting deep into a certain fandom. People all have their own comfort zone. Filming every little thing. Like why are they filming them doing basic stuff like grocery shopping? From an archaeological anthropological perspective it's amazing. Could you imagine what we could learn if we had thorough records of the day-to-day -day life of average citizens from the Roman Empire? Or even the Mayans, Mesopotamians, any of these ancient civilizations? Prime the drink. Simply don't understand the hype. Snapchat and streaks. I'm a teacher, just for context. One of my students, 14 years old, absolutely lost his shit when I threw away the prime bottle he had left in my class the day before. You'd have thought I threw out his iPhone the way he reacted. For fuck's sake, kid. It was a half empty Gatorade knockoff. It isn't that big of a deal. I don't understand certain genres of TikTok YouTube videos. Who is entertained by those videos where it's a robot voice reading out Reddit comments while Subway Surfer is being played on screen? Who is the audience for those videos where some dude with an awful haircut asks people risque questions either on a college campus or at the beach? For me it's the ones where half the screen is a video, and the other half is just some dude smiling or nodding his head. I guess if you're gonna steal content, putting your face on it fools the algorithm. Doesn't matter, they'll be pretending to hate the things they used to love in a couple years anyway just like we did. Then loop back around to loving it again in 5 years that seems to be the vibe. As a teacher, I get enormously annoyed by the idea that it seems cool to be stupid for a significant amount of teens. Like being actually proud of lacking or pretending to lack basic knowledge or primary skills. Over the last two weeks I had a 14 wild pretending not to know who the figure of Christ was, a kid claiming not to know how to use a ruler and one who claimed to never have used scissors. Update. Five minutes ago a 14 wild asked me whether pigs have ears. Pride in being dumb isn't a new thing. Whole groups of people have taken pride in it for decades. Prank videos. 
The only one I liked is a guy using fake weights at the gym and didn't interrupt other people working out it was nice to see people look at someone who looks like they are 12 beach press 450 pounds. Talking loudly with your phone on speaker while in public. Older people do it, too. WTF is that all about? I blame it on reality TV, especially the K-Gang. They all talk like that on the phone so the audience can hear. It drives me crazy. Recording videos of themselves dancing in the middle of a Home Depot. This is where the loss of shame comes in. Nobody should be proud to make a public nuisance of themselves, and yet there they are, begging for attention as if they are the main character of life itself. I don't know if it's the misanthrope speaking or the aging millennial or what but I can't fucking stand the look at how good of a person I am type shit. It's not so much the videos. It's people writing these lengthy ass stories including things that were said quotes and everything about how they helped a woman at a gas station because three other dudes were harassing her. That's just the most recent one I saw earlier today. And it's like, cool man, none of that probably happened, but if it actually did. Why do you feel the need to write a lengthy post and then admonish people not doing the same? Personally, if I saw a woman going through something like that, I'd probably silently try to make sure she's okay if that doesn't work, then I'd step in. I'd probably get my ass beat if it were actually a dangerous situation. And also, I'd be afraid the woman would think I'm just joining in with the other dudes and freak her the fuck out even more. But regardless, I sure as fuck wouldn't feel the need to announce it. Hey look how great I am. Did you read my story about how I'm a better person than you? Then everyone claps. Declaring everything as a result of a mental illness. Sometimes people are just assholes. Or using a psych diagnosis as an excuse for their behavior. It's not an excuse. A diagnosis explains the behavior and should be used as a tool to effect change. Putting random cooking or satisfying videos next to the main video on TikTok I don't know if it started as a trick to keep people's attention, but as someone with diagnosed and lifelong ADD, they're only distracting and take away from what the main video is it drives me up the wall and no matter how many times I press not interested I still get videos like that on my FIP I hope this trend dies out sometime soon. It's a tactic to get people to watch the video. It's a different person showing their satisfying video but it's too boring without the accompanying video so they're essentially using someone else's video to be auditory entertainment to listen to. Usually it's a story time, comedian set, someone reading an ATA post in my experience, so they still get the views and likes and comment engagement on a video on their account even if usually people are liking it for the other video. It's just people being sneaky and trying to easily profit without doing much work. Filming everything they do and putting it online. I prefer to be mostly anonymous. Privacy is bliss. Cosmetic stuff and video games. Some of it is kind of cool but I don't understand the amount of value people put on it. Edit. Just a clarification I'm not for or against cosmetics earned or paid for. I was just surprised when I learned how serious it is to some people. Agreed. Jedi Survivor just came out and there is a deluxe edition for $20 extra bucks. All it is are 2 outfits and 2 weapon skins. Completely cosmetic. FaceTiming people instead of calling them. Unless you have to show me something, I prefer not to show my face on screen. Sometimes people call me for random stuff that they could have just told me about with a text message. I don't need a phone call for you to tell me that you are out of town. Social media celebrities. Celebrity worship is one of the dumbest things in society. It's baffling how anyone thinks being popular or having some sort of talent makes you an infallible god to worship. Most of them are just as flawed and stupid as the rest of society. They just happen to be famous. The drink prime. I think it's disgusting. I'll take a Gatorade over any flavor of that stuff. My son and his friends love it though. 
I guess I'm old or something because I'm 31 and I have no idea what Prime is but it's popped up 3 times in this thread. I don't understand the search for friendships, validation and approval via sharing themselves online. There's something so paper thin about it. I understand the irony of replying with this on a social networking site like Reddit. People say that about Reddit, but it's a different experience for me I realize I'm projecting my own experience, but I come here mainly for information. If you don't have Twitter FB Insta, this is where news breaks first also, access to specialized communities with occasional experts, of whom, I can scan comment history to partially gauge authenticity. I'll admit there's a social component but it's attractive to me explicitly because of how semi-anonymous it is most people don't post their face, and any of the people I reply to, we will likely never speak again. The videos where they say it's a life hack when it's just common sense. I could try out this crazy life hack for perfectly cut bagels, every time. Proceeds to use a bagel cutter. Like. Seriously? You need someone to tell you that? Listening to the music on mobile speaker while walking around the street or traveling via public transportation. That's not just young people. I know guys in their 30s that do that. A co-worker does this while walking to work. You can hear him coming from blocks away. The broccoli top hairstyle. Influencers? selfies. Extreme pranking people. What they do these days is very dangerous to them and others while not being funny. If you have to tell people it's a prank to try to not get your ass beat or shot, you've gone too far. The Andrew Tate style of misogynistic alpha male bullshit that so many young men seem to buy into. I guess I kind of get how they're susceptible to that sort of stuff, but the ideology doesn't really make much sense. I think most of the rest of the stuff like TikTok, hairstyles, and clothing is just a kids these days kind of thing where people aren't open minded enough to realize the stuff they were into as kids was seen as being just as stupid by the older generation. Because really, it boils down to it just being different and new. It's important to understand who Tate's audience actually is. It's not young men like you might think instead it's even younger, boys around 5th 6th grade. It's boys around the age when they start hitting puberty and gain that desire to be manly. Things like wanting to have armpit and pubic hair and to shave. And because these are literal children, when some piece of shit comes along and is like I'm a manly man, here's how you become a manly man. By disrespecting women they believe it because they literally don't know any better. Just because you have a bluetooth speaker doesn't mean you should be blasting your shitty music. I don't want to hear fucking fetty wap at like 8am when I'm getting a donut at 7-11. Like, am I the only person left on earth who appreciates silence once in a while?